All right, everybody. Well, welcome back to the All Things Croatia podcast. Uh, we've got a super special guest today. We have Marcela, who is a Croatian singer-songwriter. Uh, she first appeared in 2011 on Croatia's TV show Looking for a Star, is the, the English translation there. Uh, yeah. Since then, <laughs> she's wrote a bunch of hit songs, including one that she'll be performing on Dora, which is the Croatian national competition to select a song for Eurovision. So, Marcela, thank you very much for taking the time to come on the podcast. Well, thank you for the call and uh, for the yeah great introduction. <laughs> <laughs> of course, yeah, and definitely left a few things out because you know I want to hear it from you. Um, but yeah, let's let's get to know you a little bit. You know, if you don't mind, just starting us off by telling us a little bit about yourself and you know growing up and where you grew up. Yeah, so I grew up in uh, in Croatia in a small town called Sikvenica which is on the north part of the coast. It's a very beautiful, touristic place. So if you want to, you know, visit uh, Croatia and the coast, uh, I would recommend Rikvenica. <laughs> I really enjoyed uh, uh, growing up there because, uh, of course, you know, there is something special about growing up in a small town, knowing everyone and uh, just having like a small, you know, community. And, uh, and there, um, yeah, we had a, like a music school and, uh, I had, uh, my sister that was five years older than me and she started playing guitar in a music school. And, uh, basically, you know, she was my idol, uh, for everything when I was, you know, little. And, uh, when she started playing guitar, I said like, mom and dad, I I'm going to play guitar too. You know, it was not, not no, any other option. And uh, I started when I was eight years old uh, in a music school and uh, I started playing guitar and uh, simultaneously I started singing in a choir. And then, uh, yeah, when I was 12 years old, I had my first band <laughs> Wow! and uh, first performances on like a summer festival in my hometown. And, uh, and yeah, I would say that... Uh, like let's say seriously i started in the music industry right after the show um croatia looking for a star which is hrvatska traži zvijezdu and that's uh, when i joined the band uh, uh we were called before angels and we were a cover band it was an all girl band and we were doing covers from you know like old rock songs to our newer songs and uh and uh, we we just toured all over Croatia, um, but uh, at, at the same time, we really wanted to write our own music. And uh, something that we strived for was writing in English, which I would say, let's say, twelve years ago in Croatia, that there was no market for English music. Um, so basically, um, by coincidence and by you know a friend that is uh, from the Netherlands. Um, we got a chance to uh, uh, get a record deal in the Netherlands. And uh, 10 years ago, as a band, uh, we all um, moved to the Netherlands and started our career there as a band Luminize. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's awesome. And yeah. I, mean, I want to talk about Luminize as well, but sort of going back yeah. to the beginning, you know, you mentioned yeah. you started playing the guitar and, and singing yeah. as a kid. What were some of your early musical influences? Who were you listening to, I guess, as a kid or not listening to, but who sort of inspired you back then? Yeah, I would say uh, definitely Pink. Uh, she was my, uh, she's still one of my uh, yeah, biggest idols when it comes to just vocally and as a performer. Uh, I did uh, listen to Avril. Uh, I mean, I, I, I just, you know, I wanted to be a, a cool uh, <laughs> a rock chick as, as, as a real. And uh, I listened to uh, early days of uh, Kelly Clarkson and, 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 you know, it was just a, a lot of uh, pop rock music uh, mm -hmm. when I was very little. And then uh, when I started in bands, that's when I switched to really uh older rock music as like uh, Pearl Jam, Guns N' Roses, Nirvana. That was something that I uh, listened to and uh, I mean, still am. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, so, yeah, my, 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 I would say uh, inspiration and idols are switching uh, by the, by the year. Like, uh, yeah, it really depends on which kind of like creative state, the state of mind I am. Um, because now I'm more influenced with, um, I would say, maybe more pop direction. Um, but yeah, that was 
the, those were kind of my idols, but I would say the biggest one is Pink. Yeah. And Pink. Yeah. Pink has some good songs. I'm more of yeah. a, I'm more of like a rock and roll guy myself, Yeah. but I could, I can definitely appreciate Pink has some good songs and I know she's got sort of a, you've got, I don't know, would you call it raspy your voice? Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. And Pink has the same. And, and, and of course, I mean, Linda Perry, Born and Blonde, mm -hmm. that, it's, that is something that I was also influenced by. And uh, I was just, uh, yeah, mesmerized with those kind of big, powerful uh, vocal, uh, female vocal um, sounds. And uh, yeah. Well, oh, I wanted to bring that up because I saw you did a cover of uh, What's Going On. I love that song. Yeah. And, and you did it really well. I thought that was a really good cover. Your voice oh, really you so matches much. well with that, yeah. And oh, I, I, <laughs> I'm a big so probably DC is my favorite band, but you know, like a lot of you know Guns N' Roses, Led Zeppelin, Motley Crue, and I saw that you actually back in 2011 for the show, you sang a Guns N' Roses <laughs> song, yeah. "Sweet Child of Mine." <laughs> yeah, exactly. That that like when I was 17 years old, I was I was just the biggest Guns N' Roses fan. Every my my <laughs> room was full of like Guns N' Roses pos posters, and then and I was just uh, I knew every song of Appetite for Destruction from you know from top to bottom. Even like the solo parts, I could sing them all. <laughs> you know, uh -huh. like <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. awesome. I got to see them live and I was super happy. They were really, really good. You too? Where did you see them? <laughs> yeah, I saw them in Zagreb. In, in uh, they came to Zagreb? Yeah, 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 wow. yeah. Yeah. The only thing is that Slash was not um, mm. performing with them. So I was kind of like, my heart was like, oh, I wish Slash was on the stage because for me, Guns N' Roses is, you know, it's Slash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, true. Uh, but still, I got to see them live and yeah, it was just special. <laughs> mm, that's awesome. One last thing, sort of, I guess, on that note, because yeah, I yeah. did see you, you did a Linkin Park cover as well. So I was wondering, do you ever go heavier? Like, you know, Linkin Park, a little metal type of singing? Yeah. Or... Yeah. When it comes to uh, covering uh, the songs, I think, yeah, I would say Linkin Park and and then Nirvana is maybe the the heaviest that I uh, that I covered. But I listened to also some, you know, metal bands and I recently, I mean, it's so bad that I recently discovered them, but Falling in Reverse, um, mm. uh, I don't know if you heard about that band. Uh, I, I'm, I'm absolutely a big fan of them and, and, and it, that is something that I listen to as well. But maybe covering would be, uh, I don't know, <laughs> a bit of a, a yeah. challenge thing <laughs> <laughs> definitely hard on the vocal cords i guess unless yeah, you're, <laughs> you're used to singing like that yeah <laughs> yeah um, well you, you mentioned a little bit about luminize you know the band that that you started can you talk a little bit more about that and and how that experience was yeah absolutely so basically uh um it was like an all-girl rock band and uh we were we are all from the same town Srikvenica, where i grew up and the uh, lead guitarist in the band uh, uh, is my sister. And, uh, and they had a different uh, uh, singer um, before I joined the band. And I was just, you know, like a little uh, sister uh, fangirling them and just wishing that one day I'm going to have an all-girl, you know, band. And, uh, and then uh, when I finished the show... Um, yeah, it was just the timing of that uh, the lead singer wanted to quit music and I was old enough to join the band and uh, and then I started as a uh, as a lead singer in, in a band called First Angels and then uh, and then of course when we moved to the Netherlands we kind of wanted to switch the, the name and the story around the band so we switched the name and uh, we called ourselves Luminize as we wanted to like kind of like uh, show the fresh beginning and start of the band and uh yeah that's where uh, our career started and uh, and uh we started writing our first songs uh in uh, Hilfersum um uh, with a Dutch producer Holger Schwedt and it was really it was really a nice beginning and uh, we clicked so well with uh, with the producer and the songwriters and uh and yeah, just we continued writing, and uh, very fast we started playing on uh, on really big festivals in the Netherlands because the Netherlands is a country with a lot of festivals. I think like a 
eight uh, eight hundred uh, festivals a year or something like that. Wow. Uh, so so it is uh, it is quite a big scene, <laughs> and uh, and uh, yeah, and uh, I think two thousand and sixteen we uh, released our first album. And uh, and uh, a year after that, we started. Uh, we actually uh, were a support band uh, for a band, uh, Golden Earring, which is a legendary mm -hmm. legendary rock band uh, from the Netherlands. And we toured with them for a full year uh, through the Netherlands, through Belgium. Um, yeah, that was an amazing experience. <laughs> ah, yeah, I didn't know that. That's super cool. I, yeah, I love the uh, Twilight Zone. I guess is yeah. some of the most famous. Yeah. Yeah, huh. yeah, I didn't even know yeah. they were from the Netherlands. Yeah, yeah, they are, they are, and they are pretty like legendary there because I mean, of course, they had a huge success uh, outside of the Netherlands. I know that they even uh, played with uh, Aerosmith uh, and they toured in America. So yeah, mm -hmm. their Twilight Zone and Raider Love was yeah, Raider Love. Yeah. Yeah, they play. I hear those two songs on the radio here in Los Angeles all the time. So yeah, uh, they're, they're, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's yeah, awesome yeah. that you're able to tour with them. What was it like going from Strykvenica to the Netherlands? <laughs> Big difference, I imagine. <laughs> huge difference. It was a cultural shock for me. Yeah, it was just a huge difference. You know, from a small town to 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 country that is. Uh, I don't know how to explain it, but like the Netherlands is a very free-spirited country, and then the lifestyle is completely different. And then, uh, and yeah, we moved to the city called The Hague, um, which is like a, I would say not like a super big city, but like semi-big. I think three hundred thousand people living there, and uh, it's a beautiful city. And the good thing is that it's uh, it has a that it's on the sea. And, it has a beautiful, like big uh, beach, uh, so it felt good to just be still connected with the sea. <laughs> and uh, and uh, good thing is that the Hague was kind of like a, a city where all the rock bands came from. Basically, Golden Earring also is from the Hague, uh, so it felt like we 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 chose the right city. Um, but uh, yeah, it was just a uh, it was such a different uh feeling and then and, and and yeah as i said the cult cultural shock but uh after after a while he i just started loving it and then first we really thought that we just gonna go for one year and just try out and see how it's gonna go um and yeah 10 years later i still have my address in, in the netherlands even though now i'm in croatia but trying to combine both countries <laughs> yeah yeah that's awesome and it's not too far away what is that a uh... Two hour yeah. flight, maybe? Yeah, even less. Even less, less like an hour and 45 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Quite, oh, wow. yeah. Well, that's yeah. awesome. I've got, I've got yeah. a quick, uh, fun sort of question before I go into the next segment. And I'll have a couple of these throughout the episode. But if you could cool. go to any concert in history that ever took place, which mm -hmm. would you go to? Uh, yeah, definitely Michael Jackson. That uh, is maybe something that you didn't expect, but I, I <laughs> definitely would say Michael Jackson because. Uh, I do see see him as a you know I don't know maybe the most legendary artist and uh, and and something that I really am sad about that I've never seen him live and I think that's something super 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 special so yeah he's mm. from he's from me like from another universe so yeah I would I would definitely go back and see him live and and Queen of course with mm. Freddie yeah yeah. Yeah, of course, at Wembley Stadium. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. Of course, yeah. yeah. Did you yeah. watch the yeah. movie? Uh, was yeah, Bohemian I did. Rhapsody? I did. Yeah, yeah, a couple of times, couple of times. Yeah, <laughs> loved it, loved it. Yeah, yeah. that's a good <laughs> movie. Well, you know, yeah. speaking of, of big performances, so you have yeah. your hit song "Gasoline" that you're performing on Dora. And yeah. I have to be honest with you, at least here in the U.S., a lot of Americans don't know so much about Eurovision. And I yeah. know it's really popular yeah. in Europe. And so for those yeah. listeners, I'm sure most of the listeners here, you know, are Croatian Americans or Croatians abroad. And we do have, of course, listeners in Croatia as well. But for those who may not know about Eurovision, can you sort of explain why, you know, it's so special? 
Yeah, I, I, it's, it's just a, like a competition. I have to say competition. It's a festival of, uh, you know, um, 20, uh, yeah, it depends uh, each year, but it's like around, I would say, 26 uh, songs that are competing. And it's like every country in Europe and Australia is also joining uh, uh. Uh, the Eurovision as well. Um, that is just selecting the best song that is representing the country. And then uh, it's a special um, festival because you get like, uh, yeah, just a different style of music, a different kind of artists. And, and what I like to say is like, can you imagine just like um, someone giving you 20, 26 best dishes in the world and you can just try them all at once. And it's just t- two hours of pure fun and 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 yeah uh, shebang as i call as i wanted to say because everyone's <laughs> trying to give it all in those three minutes and you get the full package in a sense of it's just not it's not about just the song it's like the whole package of a of a performance of a visuals of uh everything and uh yeah and and it's also something that i've seen lately it's it's a special community of uh, like big fans of Eurovision that come together and that are following everything so closely even before Eurovision very dedicated to the to the whole thing so it's just uh, I don't know it, it, there is something special happening around Eurovision it's it's just good vibes and, and and a lot of it seems like a lot of fun that's why really my dream is to 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 go to Eurovision <laughs> yeah well yeah it's I had never never watched it before. I don't even think I had heard of it until what, like three years ago, when I first sort of moved out to Croatia to Zagreb, and then I was watching yeah. it there, and I was in the student yeah. dorms over there, and people were having watch parties, you know, watching yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. It was just cool to be a part of, even you know, from my perspective, which is not being a part of it at yeah. all, just watching it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, and 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 it really is a thing. Like uh, we. We all gather, uh, like we are all together and and, and watching it and like, uh, I don't know, just competing with each other. Who's going to guess who's going to win? And 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 it's just it's just a lot of fun. And it's also it, it, it is a, a high level of production, what you see. And, and it's just amazing. I would say it's like pure uh, two and a half hours of adrenaline while you're watching that i don't know <laughs> yeah it's super cool and so you're competing in dora which is you know the croatia yeah. is selecting its song every country selects yeah. a song what's yeah. that going to be like for you how, how have you been preparing are you i'm sure you're excited <laughs> i'm super excited and nervous at the same time because uh it's really a big thing uh here in croatia i mean dora is uh it's really a privilege to to be part of Dora as as well, and 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 since a little girl, I've been following Dora every year, and and it's been my dream for a long time. So, yeah, I I would say you know we are really putting a lot of effort into uh, the live performance, and 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 even though you know I performed so many times, uh, uh, and and everyone is saying like, yeah, you got this, but it's just different because it's, you know, only those three minutes (laughs) Mm -hmm. and, you know, with every show that you have, the first song is always the difficult one because you're trying to, you know, uh, get loose and connect with an audience and just get comfortable on the stage, but you don't have that comfortability (laughs) with just performing one song. Uh, and it's just a lot of things to think about it, like the, what I said, the visual and the choreography and everything. But uh, yeah, we started heavily with uh, with uh, rehearsals uh, already uh, now in the studio where where the Dora will happen. And uh, yeah, the more, you know, I, I perform it, the more I'm comfortable with it. And, and it's just I keep on reminding myself uh on the day of Dora to just really enjoy the moment because I really dreamt about it uh, for a long time. So I just hope that no matter the result, I'm just going to watch that with like, I don't know, big smile on my face and just be proud of what I, what I did on the stage because uh, it's not just uh, my effort. It's the effort of the whole team. And I just want to make them proud as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, I'm sure you will. Yeah, and you have to go out there yeah. and compete, but at the same time, you have to enjoy yourself while you're there. Exactly. You know, you, it's, you only have the one song, and yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> can you tell us a little bit about the song that you're performing? 
Yeah. So the, the, the song is called uh, Gasoline, and uh, I wrote it uh, last year around May, I would say. Um, so I wrote it with my uh, Dutch team um, because I started working with them at the beginning of last year. And, uh, and I do have to say that we immediately clicked uh, so well. And, uh, and I like when I finished, like I, when we stopped with Luminize, I started with my solo career in 2020. Um, but I was still kind of searching myself in like who Marcella is and what's Marcella sound because I was so used to writing for Luminize and uh, I knew that, you know, rock music is something that I strive for, but I started experimenting with different styles and then trying to see like who really Marcella is. And I would say that I really needed to find my good team which I found last year um and uh I do have to say that I I I with the first session that we did and with my first single not the same we uh I think I found my sound which I like to call pop in a leather jacket <laughs> <laughs> which is kind of like pop rock uh, sound um and uh and yeah uh, as I said like we wrote gasoline uh yeah in uh, around May and um Basically, uh, my whole team was such a big fan of uh, of Eurovision. They still are, and uh, and we, with every session, writing session that we started, we would always say like, uh, "Today we're gonna write a song for Eurovision." <laughs> <laughs> every uh, that was always like a goal of uh, of a writing session. Um, but the good thing is that my sound is something that I stri strive for, like a big, uh, energetic pop sound, and I think that fits. Dora and Eurovision so every song that we wrote was in the back of our mind maybe this could be for you know Dora but I knew that uh, the song needs to happen in, in order for me to say like okay I'm, I'm I'm applying this year and that happened with Gasoline the first chorus that we uh, you know when we when we first wrote the chorus we knew that 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 was the song and uh, and I know that day we just started with an idea of like, let's try to experiment with like a more upbeat song because I was ha like writing a lot of, I would say a semi, mm, yeah, semi tempo songs, like more of a, like Imagine Dragon songs, like a, a half, um, how to say that? I'm sorry, my, my, it's a morning, so I don't know how to even explain. <laughs> That's right, but okay. Uh, and and I know that we said like let's 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 try with a more upbeat song, and uh, and yeah, and uh, I think the first thing we had was the production, uh, which was kind of like uh, yeah, uh, it had an influence of '80s, which you can hear, and a lot of synths and and then and, uh, and the grooviness and uh, and th and then then we started like you, you know just throwing ideas like a melody ideas and the first thing we had was the the hook like gasoline and from then on uh, it was just uh yeah uh, it was a great session quite fast we had the first chorus and then and the theme of the song is just basically um something that uh, is related to what uh, I went through the beginning of last year and it was kind of like a, a, um, a hard, big heartbreak. And, uh, and of course, uh, I, as a, every human, you get, you know, hurt and you are very sad at that moment. But that sometimes, you know, in those situations, you kind of, you kind of wake up your fighting spirit, I would say, and you want to fight more and, and harder. And uh, gasoline is basically saying that uh, what doesn't kill you, you know, makes you stronger in a sense of like, okay, hurt me, set me on fire, but I'm just going to burn like gasoline, you know? So yeah. And, and it's basically, yeah, I want to spread that energy and, and message of uh, no matter what happens, uh, just keep on fighting. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Very powerful message to go along with your very powerful voice, which shines in the song. Oh, so that's awesome. You. And I'll include links um, so people can go ahead and click on that. Whoever's listening um, to hear that song. Uh, super excited to hear you perform that. Changing the subject hey. here to uh, one yeah. of the quick question, but <laughs> what is your favorite food to eat when you're in Croatia? Ooh, 
<laughs> I love that question. Uh, my favorite food to eat when I'm in Croatia is, oh, um, well, I'm trying to like pick one because I could go like a, you know, a <laughs> list. But maybe I would say sarme. Mm. I don't know if you know uh, of what course. sarme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I would say sarme because that's such a special dish, and you cannot eat it anywhere else than in Croatia. I would say. I mean, I, I've never tried it anywhere else, so maybe I'm saying wrong things. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, that would be the my 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 favorite thing. You know, I always wish it when I come to my like. Uh, hometown and uh, to my mom I always say like can you make sarma <laughs> yeah I was gonna ask who's cooking <laughs> yeah. no I've never made them and I really <laughs> want to know how to make them and 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 my mom always tells me like oh it's so difficult I'm gonna show you one time but it never happened <laughs> <laughs> I'm the same way I like in theory I like you know learning the recipes and everything but when it comes down to it I said uh you know mom I'll just let you make it and, and I'll eat it exactly <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly and also when you eat sarma you just want to eat the, the good ones and i'm and i'm just afraid to make the bad ones you know <laughs> uh, yeah yeah you don't want to mess it up <laughs> yeah exactly uh sorry going back then to music here um you mentioned some yeah. of your influences and the bands that you listen to yeah do you listen to any croatian bands or artists or i guess growing up as well did you have any influences yeah in yeah i, I yeah, yeah, I did listen to Croatian artists a lot. I'm still, still am. Uh, I, I, yeah, more influenced with uh, more of an international um, artist. But when it comes to Croatian artists, uh, I did listen a lot to a Parni Valak uh, band. And Kiki Rahimovski is uh, someone like, uh, I would say, oh, sorry. Well, I made a mistake. Aki Rahimovsky. Kiki is his uh, son. Aki Rahimovsky is uh, um, probably one of my uh, favorite uh, voices of Croatia. <laughs> he really has a, a special voice and uh, he's very dear to my heart and he's not uh, anymore um, here with us. Uh, and uh, and uh, um, Barney Vajlak now has a different uh, uh, frontman, but uh, I, I do have to say that uh, that band is quite special and his voice uh, is some like a voice that influenced me when I was uh, a little girl. Um, I love Urban. I don't know if you heard about Urban, but he really is a special uh, artist and songwriter and uh, his lyrics are really, really, really special, and his voice is like a huge and and and, and powerful voice. Um, yeah, I uh, from a newer artist uh, now that are really active on the scene. I I really like uh, uh, Matja Zvek. He's one of uh, uh, like uh, amazing uh, male vocalists uh, now in Croatia. Uh, I would say uh, when it comes to like a uh, newer style, I, I recently discovered Miac. Uh, she has a really fresh modern production and uh, it's really interesting. Uh, there are a lot of newer artists that are just killing it now on, on, on the scene and I'm so happy to see that. Um, Filip Rudan is someone that I'm really enjoying. Uh, his music is amazing and it's sounding really, really modern and fresh and uh yeah, yeah. Okay. There awesome. are a couple. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, a lot of recommendations for me now to go through later and, yeah. and listen to. So thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've got a, a few more. This is uh this is a first that I'm doing here. But basically okay. what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you a specific scenario and I want you to tell me what song you would like to go along with that, or like what song you would listen to during this moment, if that makes sense. Oh, I love that. Okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll see how this goes. <laughs> Um, kind of, uh, well, this is a more of a Zagreb specific one, but hiking, okay. you're hiking Slieme, which is the mountain over there in Zagreb yeah, yeah, yeah. and the sun just begins to rise. Okay. That's it. And then what song plays? I don't know if it's like a movie scene for you or just like what you're thinking in your head during that moment, something like that. <laughs> I don't know. I, I do like, I really have to be honest. First song that pop into my head uh was uh from toto hold the line hold wow. the line da, 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 da. yeah 
It was really because I don't know. It has the like kind of like you're you're hiking and walking at a down. Oh, so you're really hiking at a good pace then. You're not just you're not just strolling. Yeah, I don't know why. I guess because immediately when you mention hiking, I I I always like. You know, when you train or walk or something, you you just need a, like a right tempo. To... Mm -hmm. Okay, I like that. An interesting fact, I don't know if you know, but the keyboardist of Toto who wrote that song and their, and most of their other hits is actually Croatian as well. Croatian American. I think either his oh. dad or his grandparents. I'm not sure what generation. Wait, I think I might knew that, but no. Yeah, yeah it sounds familiar, but yeah. Every, yeah. Oh, that's yeah, cool. So it's cool. I've been trying to get him on the podcast too, actually, because Toto, you know, incredible band, a lot of hits, but oh, uh, yeah. no success yet. So right. hopefully he'll he'll hear this and reach out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, let me oh, give you, yeah. I got a few more scenarios here. Okay. Um, <laughs> this one is, you're sad, having <laughs> you're having a bad day, and you're in the tram, and it's raining outside. Ooh. You're sitting there looking out the window at the rain. Um, yeah, first song that popped into my head is uh, Sorry from Nothing But Thieves. Hmm. I'll have to check that one out. No, I don't know that one. Yeah. I I, I don't know. The I, I do play that song a lot when I'm down. Mm -hmm. Um because yeah, yeah. I listen to it. I love nothing, nothing but teeth. So yeah, sorry would be okay. the song. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll have to check that one out. Yeah. Uh yeah. next one, two more here is cool. it's summertime. Oh. You're lying on the beach, say in uh Rijeka or Srikvenica has as a beach, right? Venica. Okay, yeah, well, yeah, we'll yeah, say yeah. there with a Karlo Vachko. <laughs> Karlo Vachko, nice. <laughs> nice, 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 nice. <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. That's a good one. I'm just imagining myself now sitting. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I do that. So it's not like I need to uh, imagine something that never happened. Yeah, it's a <laughs> realistic scenario. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 um... Oh, my God. Why am I not stuck? Because I'm thinking now too much. <laughs> <laughs> Carlo Ajko. Okay, when you're drinking Carlo Ajko in Sirkvenica, I need a... <laughs> I guess at that point, it depends how many Carlo Ajkos you've had. Maybe you don't even exactly. hear the music at that point. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um... Oh my God, why, why I cannot uh, think about a song that I would play like a... Just thinking about myself, like putting a, a, a taking a phone and putting a playlist on what what mm -hmm. I would put. It really also depends if I'm alone or I'm with like uh, my friends. Because if I would be with my friends, then it would probably be like a creation song, and it would be probably like something uh, from yeah, uh, I would say Oliver Dagoevich or. Um, or they would go Misha Kovac or something like that. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, something, something like that. It would be a creation song. It would okay. definitely be a creation song. Misha, he's got some some sad ones though, some ballads. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 Misha would be probably something more for later when we have like I don't know five or six got a lot. Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> and then I feel it's Hands in the air. And... <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's well, also good for the tram in the rain, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. And last, last scenario here. This, mm. I don't know if you'll be able to relate to this or if you ever thought about this, but if you okay. had to have a walkout song for a fight, Ooh. what would it be? <laughs> gasoline there you go <laughs> i was wondering i say i was thinking you know when which scenario is she gonna say gasoline to <laughs> i think that's the perfect one <laughs> i love it i love it <laughs> Sam Amara, i'm gonna burn like gasoline still <laughs> it, fits. it fits perfectly for that yeah <laughs> i love it great answer great answer well 
that's sort of uh winding down here last couple of minutes of the podcast um i want to ask you know of course you've got dora coming up and hopefully eurovision after that but aside from that what uh what sort of future plans do you have both you know for your career or personally otherwise yeah it's uh now that i'm that i found my team uh i really want to continue just writing a lot of songs and uh releasing the next single after gasoline and just uh continuing in the same tempo and uh building my uh solo career and uh hopefully just growing as an artist uh, as a performer and something that i really wish to start as soon as possible is performing live because that's what i absolutely love doing the most so hopefully you know summer is coming soon so i i really do hope to play on some festivals and just experience the whole live show <laughs> yeah definitely that'd be awesome I'll, I'll be looking forward to that and yeah. um marcella i want to thank you again so much for your time for coming here on the all things croatia podcast you were a thank great you. guest gave a great interview and i only have <laughs> one one final question that i've been asking oh. every guest yes. that comes on the podcast okay what do you makes croatia special people definitely people uh i would say the warmth of the people the 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 i don't know the generous hearts the warm hearts the 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 yeah just the um how to say that uh, the hospitality of people that is just uh, i don't know special i would say absolutely i agree yeah marcella thank yeah. you so much again for coming on the podcast and best of luck in dora and and your future future plans really so looking much. forward to it thank you so much i really enjoyed it thank you <laughs>